take 16. <laughs> this has been the toughest video we've ever tried to make. <laughs> it's all because we're having uh, issues with things. Equipment. I'm not going to go any further than that. <laughs> Electronic equipment uh, usage. I swear. <laughs> By the way, this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. Hi there. Hope you're having a much better day than we are. Anyway, uh, today's a gloomy day, and that's another issue. We're trying to get this in and beat the rain because AccuWeather says that it's going to be. In fact, Accu, according to AccuWeather, it should be raining right now, but it's not. Well, AccuWeather is yeah. not always yeah. accurate. And then they're predicting, you know, some heavy thunderstorms tonight. So the birds uh, are singing. Yeah. How could it possibly get be getting exactly. ready to rain? The bird is singing. And I hear an airplane going over. Yeah, we're good. Boy, the birds are singing. Yeah, it's right over there. Okay, that makes me feel. I'm just listening to the birds makes me feel much better. <laughs> However, we did. Uh, yesterday was a beautiful day here, wasn't it? Yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. Yes, just absolutely beautiful. A bright sunshine, and we had a visitor yesterday. Yes, we did. Our Who? our lovely daughter. Yeah. Miss Melinda came out to visit for the whole day. She sat. We sat. We talked. We stared at the water. And we had a wonderful visit. Hey, everybody. This is Bill. And. Deb and our daughter Melinda. Hi there. Say hi. Hello. Say hi, Melinda. I said hi. Well, okay. <laughs> I said hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Anyway, she came out to visit with us today, and it's absolutely a gorgeous day today, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So, Melinda, does this inspire you when you see where we're at here? Does this inspire you to want to, uh, you know? start looking into this kind of life? <laughs> well, Mom and I were just talking that, um, you know, if I sold my house, mm -hmm. I could probably buy an RV and a truck to pull it and pay cash. But would, I had to sell my house. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. It would, but my husband would still have to work. Well. So, you know, we'd have to hang around here. But I just told Kevin that we've got to think about this. There you go. Reevaluate. And of course, <laughs> right now you guys are mainly sitting in the shade right now, but uh, this is the view you're you're looking at right mm -hmm. here. I mean, there's better spots to sit to see the view a whole lot better, but it'd be right directly out in the sun. That's right. Yeah. So right now we're in the shade. But yeah, because so. we burn, we pale faces. Yeah. <laughs> well, you kind of get that from your from your dad. Burn. Yeah, for sure. So anyway. Uh, the reason why we thought we'd do this video today and the reason why we're standing in front of our mini split is we did have a question from, uh, actually it was a three-part question yes. from one of our viewers and evidently this particular viewer is considering building or is in the midst of building a uh, cargo trailer conversion or a schoolie. I don't know exactly what he's I in. don't think he told us yeah, that. He didn't, didn't say that part. Immaterial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he had some questions of concern. Uh, about uh, going with a mini split so we thought that we would address those questions today and before we get started though there's one thing I want to do see this bit right here make a mental note of that bit and here's what I'm going to do I'm going to lay this bit right there okay right there is where I'm going to lay this bit and we'll get back to that here in just a little bit all right all right all right so would you like to read the first question please the very first question he had was, why this style versus the regular rooftop type RV yeah. the air tr conditioner? Traditional RV traditional. air conditioner, rooftop exactly. air conditioner. Why? Yeah. What's the, you know, pros exactly. and cons. Right. Well, and we've had both. Yes. Uh, in the red trailer, the way we designed the red trailer, uh, we designed it with the thought in mind of putting a traditional RV rooftop air conditioner on top. Uh, for one thing, we didn't know hardly anything at all about mini splits at the time, no. so uh, it just worked better with our original design. Uh, knowing what we know now, while we were designing the red trailer, it probably would have had a mini split as well. Right. But let's go into uh, the problems we had with the uh, rooftop air. Regular rooftop air. air. Yeah. yeah. So you want to start? Well, we had it installed in July, mm -hmm. and it was pretty hot. And it was a 
15,000 15, mm -hmm. uh, BTU on rooftop air. We paid a guy to install it, so we had a total of... Actually, I need to digress. I'm pretty sure it was a 15 point, 13 point That's 5. That's what I thought. Yeah, it was I'm, a 13.5. Thank gonna you. I wasn't going to argue. Well... <laughs> What difference does it make? Well, it's been a bad day. Actually, it was, let, let's digress a little bit. It was a 13.5. Okay, now we can move on. Okay, yeah. all right. And we paid a gentleman to install it, a exactly. professional. All together with the cost of the unit and what we paid the gentleman to install it, who was an RV guy, uh, we had roughly seven and a half in it, $750 right. in it okay. all together. So we used it all the rest of the summer from July till uh, approximately October when it starts getting too cold because we were in Northwest Arkansas at the time, so we quit using the right. air. Right, exactly. So it set all winter. We got ready to gear it back up the next summer and we went up and we blew out everything. Right, we went ahead and pulled the cover off of it. Yes. I got a friend of mine who's uh, you know, a little, little bitty, bitty guy because <laughs> I'm a little bit too big to climb up on top and he got up there and he took the, uh, the uh, uh, Oh, what do they call it? The cover off of the air conditioner, and uh, we used compressed air, and we just kind of cleaned it up and blew it out and everything, and then buttoned it all back up. And it worked great. Oh yeah, it, was, it started working great. Until, you know, right the shoot. until about the middle of summer. Yeah, I'd say around uh, June, the latter part of June, something like that. And we were at Greer's Ferry Lake in Arkansas. And it was hot. Uh huh. And our air conditioner quit. Yep. Boom. Boom. So we called an RV repair guy that made house calls he came to the campground mm -hmm. and he got up on top and he determined that the motor was bad and let me let, let's talk a little bit more about this gentleman he was an awesome guy and he was quite adept at uh, repairing uh, traditional RV rooftop air conditioners because uh, he uh, indicated to us that uh, that was the vast majority of his business was working on rooftop air conditioners. Exactly. Especially in the summertime. In the summer, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway. he, uh, fortunately, our unit was still under warranty. We still had to pay him to install said new, but he gave us a motor because the one from Dometic at that time was going to be about three months before right. we would get it. Launched. We eventually got the uh, new motor, yeah. but it was over 90 days down the road. Yeah. And of course, we couldn't go without air for 90 days. No, 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 no. But being the great guy that he was, he, uh, he happened to have another unit that matched ours in his shop that had failed for another reason and but the motor was still a good working motor in that one so he took the motor out of that one and installed it in uh ours on 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 our trailer to get us by until the new motor came in so uh in less than a year's time of owning of having the rooftop air conditioner mounted on top of the trailer uh and then when then factor in the fact that we probably only used it maybe four months out of that year's time four or five months out of that year's time before it failed, that's not a very good record. Plus it was loud and yes. noisy and we couldn't carry on a conversation inside unless we were yelling at each other, which made, you know, all the neighbors thought we were having fights all the time. Right. So. We had to play the TV wide open so we could hear it, you know, all the different kinds of things. So like when that. we got ready to build this trailer, mm -hmm. some friends of ours had a mini split mm -hmm. and we thought mini splits were way too expensive until we did research and it was like wait a minute yeah it's not any more money than what we had before plus this has a heat pump in it well we paid 795 dollars for this now granted we did have help to install it yes. you know but uh we together with me and and marvin and marvin and uh, jan and johnny who happened to be there helping us at the time when it got time to install the air conditioner we had it uh, installed and up and running in very short order and it was J june in in, in florida, florida. And we were so grateful <laughs> we were so grateful <laughs> but this thing compared to a uh, a uh, traditional rooftop air conditioner there is no comparison this one is quiet super yes. quiet we I mean, you, when we're inside the trailer, you don't even know it's on. And even when you're standing outside the trailer and the outside unit kicks on. The way you know it's running is you walk past and you get a breeze. Yeah, you get a little bit of a breeze, <laughs> but that's like, about oh, it. It's you on. Know. <laughs> and, and since we've had this installed, how many times have we noticed when we're at a campground and someone else's air condition, rooftop air conditioner kicks on, how many times have we noticed the noise 
they're very i mean yeah even it, from we the were outside shocked. We yeah were, it was like wow you know uh they're louder than Most a lot generators. of a lot of generators <laughs> out there from the outside so that's why we went the route we did all right let's have okay. the next question here how long do those the mini split uh -huh. last being that they are made for residential or stay put applications and of course he's concerned about the fact you know that we moved down the road with this Absolutely. which we will address and we with were another concerned question. with that as well yeah but here's what we let, to answer that particular question right now because we'll get into it a little deeper with the third question that he asked uh we've had this one now since um almost a year we've had it uh, this is the end of april we installed it last June, so we've had it about 10 months. And we have driven this trailer down the road. Tra towed this trailer down the road. That uh, you, can't, you can't drive the trailer, huh? Oh. No, you okay. have to tow it. Tow it. We yeah. towed it down the road for approximately 3,000 miles. <laughs> and that's just rough. I'd say more like 35. And it you could know, have we, been. We kind of talked about that. Between three yeah. and 3,500 miles. But Marvin and Mary, our friends Marvin and Mary, who's had their uh, mini split, same brand, same, same, same brand, Senville. Uh, they've had theirs now for over two years, and they've probably traveled three times as many miles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have been all over. They just went on a big trip and got back just, you know, just before the rendezvous down in Florida. They had just returned from a huge trip that took them way up into South Dakota, went across South Dakota, came down through Wyoming, down into Arizona. Then they jogged back up. <laughs> to uh colorado. colorado if i remember correctly <laughs> and then they came turn around and came back down they stopped off to see us at the time we were here in northwest arkansas they stopped to visit with us a little bit and then eventually they ended up back in florida uh about a month or so before it was time to head over uh to the rendezvous exactly. you know exactly so they and there's they haven't had one minute's trouble with theirs and we're talking lots of miles travel and uh, they've had theirs now for close to two years. So Exactly. All right. Now, um, we do take a few precautions with ours. Yeah, and which we'll address in this third okay, question. The third so why don't you question. ask that one? Being that they're made for residential applications, how do they hold up against the forces they endure while traveling? High frequency vibration, wind, etc. Okay, the way I want to start off answering that question remember this um, bit right here that i laid right here well i did that for demonstration purposes and the reason why i did that is because while we were in florida when we were getting ready to head over to another campground which was about a hundred miles or so away we uh, we were packing up the day before and we've been working on the trailer so we had lots of stuff to pack up we had tools to pack up uh, and there was a table sitting fairly close to the trailer and I was getting ready to pack the table up first because I needed to put it in the van first had some tools laying on it and one of the things I had laying on it was this bit right here and I thought well I'm you know I have to focus on one thing at a time that's the way I do things so I thought well here's what I'll do I'm just going to lay this bit right here and then when I start packing up tools I'll come back and get it mm. <laughs> I didn't come back and get it. I forgot. Nope. And so, I put the cover over right, it and never even saw it. Right. So we covered it up, you know, which which we'll talk about more yeah. in depth about that here in just a second. But uh, the next morning when we were hooking up, we put the cover over the air conditioner, got it all buttoned up, hooked up, and drove that hundred or so miles to the next campground. When we got there and started setting up, lo and behold, this bit was laying right there. Hadn't moved from that spot. Now, the point that I'm trying to make here with this is the fact that we have this thing mounted to the tongue of the trailer here on the front of the nose of the trailer. That is the smoothest riding spot on the entire trailer. And, and the fact that it's so smooth riding, uh, you know, the fact that this bit is still there attests to that. <laughs> now, granted, when we had this trailer uh, spec built, we spent, had them build it with an extended tongue because we were pretty sure we were going to go ahead and go with a mini split this time. So we made sure that we got an extended tongue so there would be enough room to mount this, this here. In addition to that, I don't know if you can see it, but we also got the uh, extra rubber mounts. I've seen where some folks just bolt them right down without these, but these are a rubber type mount. And this was like $30 for the I kit or something like that. Got them at we'll Amazon. You know, we'll find a link to that. So, you know, we've got them bolted down to that. And the other thing too is, you know, 
we don't just, as we briefly mentioned a second ago, we don't just hook onto the trailer with this thing sitting here like this and take off. Yeah, because the no. wind, yeah, you don't want that. You don't no. want a rock accidentally kicking up into it. No, I mean, no. We, we think, we think, and we, we recommend that everybody else does this, and Marvin and Mary, that's what they do. They make sure that theirs is covered well before they take off down the road. Um, so what we found that fits over this just perfect is a, a large uh, cover for a large generator. Actually, it's an extra large. Is it an extra large? It's an extra large. And we bought the one that fits a WEN, W-E-N, the extra large cover for a WEN generator, W-E-N. And I believe we got it at Home Depot. Home Depot. Yeah, you can get them there. But I think they offer them like three different sizes. You want to get the biggest one. Yeah. You know, uh, the, uh, the one they call the extra large. Extra large. We'll find a link and yes. post it for you. But it works perfectly to cover this thing. In addition to that, what we also do... Uh, Two things we do, we have a foam board uh, piece of insulation that we will bungee strap to cover this right here. Uh, we loaned that out to someone else to cover theirs <laughs> because they had a, they had lost theirs. So what we ended up doing, we have an old pad uh, that goes on our uh, wicker couch that we're going to throw away. So now what we do until we cut a new piece of foam board, which I have some in the van, we, we cover that with that old uh, pad from a wicker couch. And then, and we bungee it on, and then we turn around and put the cover on, and we bungee the cover on as well. We run a bungee cord around underneath and come back up and hook it, and then we also run another bungee cord around it like this to keep this thing protected as we're going down the road. Right. You know, and so far, no issues whatsoever. At this point in time, we could not be happier. No. No. Now, there's one thing that we will have to uh, talk about and have to admit. Since these are made for residential applications and the fact that we have mounted it on our trailer, that pretty much null and voids the warranty. There exactly. is there's technically no warranty on it. Right. But on the other hand, if we ever had to have work done on it, uh, I can probably call almost any HVAC guy and he can stand right here just like we are and work and on he it. He doesn't have to climb up on my roof. <laughs> he did no climbing up on the roof and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, uh, everything eventually fails. Nothing lasts forever. No. 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 But uh, we so have far, just been happier with this. Yeah. And so far, see, we use this all the time with yeah. the with the air conditioner on the trailer. Since it doesn't have a heat pump on it, and it was strictly an air conditioner, uh, out of the time that we had it before it failed. We only used it maybe 30, 40% of that time. Yeah, because we had another heat system right. in the red trailer. Exactly. This, this trailer is our, this does it all. This is our heater and everything because it's a heat pump as well. And some nights it does both. We start out with air conditioning. <laughs> About four in the morning, I flip it over to heat yeah. because all of a sudden the temperature's dropped and now we're cold. And it's all done with a remote. remote. And who has control of the remote? Moi. <laughs> I have control of the of the mini split remote. It's mine. Oh, shoot. So, you know, um, that's that's the thing. Uh, we uh, we really feel like uh, we made a wise decision, and uh, you know, Marvin and Mary uh, can attest to that. Uh, they've had theirs a lot longer than we've had ours, and they too have had zero issues with Mark theirs. has had his. Mark, we did a when we did a walkthrough on Mark. Uh, Mark's trailer, uh, which by the way, it's getting a lot more views here recently. Uh, yeah. He's the one that had the black uh, eight and a half by twenty four footer, and he painted the 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 outside board. unit, the the cover over it to so match I'm his to black get trailer. Plank, but this one gray. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but there, it's pretty well involved. You have to you have to take all this off and then squirt it, well, you know, with paint, and then you yeah, got to you know, bolt it back. Whatever. On. And I have other things I need to do, but anyway. Um, so we do know a few people, and the, and everyone we've talked to so far uh, is very, very happy with their mini split. And there's one other thing that we did not mention. What's that? This thing uses at least a third less power That's right. than a traditional unit on top, an RV unit would, which makes it a whole lot easier, and it works much better with our, uh, you know, our battery system. So if you're system. wanting to boondock and still have comfort. <laughs> when we have good sun and everything, we already know that we can run this, whether it be in the heat pump mode or 
air conditioner mode, we know we can go unplugged for at least two days with no issues whatsoever. And, so and that's and you couldn't do that with a rooftop. Yeah, well, you'd have to have a really, really, really large battery bank. Plus, this is, has a built-in soft start already. Comes with soft start, whereas the uh, the unit that you put on top, although they do make some now that have soft start included, most of them you have to buy a kit, a soft start kit, and I've seen those kits to go for you know three hundred dollars or so. So there you go. Anything else? Nope. We've just been very happy with what we our decision at this point. So we hope this helps helps you, uh, yeah. Mr. Viewer. <laughs> And we've got a couple other things that we'll be talking about. You know, we're going to periodically uh, do videos like this uh, rather than answer the questions in the comment thread. Uh, we'll actually say, okay, this is a good topic to talk about, and then we will go ahead and talk about it. Okay. But for now, and I think we did get sprinkled on a little bit. It's yeah, kind of it, lightly it's sprinkling, sprinkling now. sprinkling right now. But other than that, everything is going fine, finally. Finally. Yeah, this is like the fifth time we tried to shoot this. I said take 16. Now you're making a liar out of me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Well. Anyway, this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. And you know what we're going to say. We are not camping. We're living. Y'all get out there, do some living, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.